Before we can dive in to the multipressor, we have to understand how compression works. And to do that, we're going to take a very close look at Logic's compressor. Compressors have a lot of controls and settings that you have to understand, even though not all of them are relevant to mastering. You have to think of a compressor as an automatic volume control, and it is usually used to lower the gain of an audio signal based upon that same signal's amplitude characteristics, thus reducing the signal's dynamic range. So let's say that this arrow represents our signal's dynamic range. A compressor works entirely on the loudest parts of the signal only without affecting the softer parts at all. And it does this by setting something called a threshold. Any part of the signal that crosses above the threshold will be compressed. Anything below will remain unaffected. And the threshold control can be set lower so that a lot of the signal is affected, or it could be set high so very little of the signal is affected. So you set the threshold in terms of a decibel level. Once you've set the threshold and determined what part of the dynamic range you want to compress, the next thing you do is you set what is called a ratio. So what is a ratio? Well, a ratio is a relationship between two numbers or amounts, and it's expressed as a proportion. The most important word in this statement is the word relationship. A ratio is a relationship between two numbers. In a compressor, that relationship is between the gain of the signal coming in that goes above the threshold and the gain of the signal coming out. That is our relationship. And it's expressed as a proportion. For instance, a proportion of 2 to 1. Proportions are really easy to understand when you're talking about penguins. Let's say we have an island of penguins, and on one side there are two penguins, and on the other side there's only one. That's a relationship or proportion of two to one. Okay, let's forget about penguins. Let's talk about something we all understand, money. Let's say you have a record deal, and for every $10 that the record company makes, you get one. That's a relationship or proportion of 10 to one, or 10%. So what happens if the record company makes $20? How much money do you get? A measly two bucks. Hmm, I guess that's why everybody's self-publishing these days. Let's say the next quarter, the record company doesn't do so well. It only makes $5. Well, at a ratio of 10 to one, $5 becomes a half a dollar. Cool, but we're not here to talk about money. We're here to talk about decibels, because if you can't master your decibels, you won't make any money. So at a ratio of four to one, if you have a signal that is one decibel above the threshold at a ratio of four to one, that one decibel will be expressed on the other side of the compressor as a quarter of a dB, right? Four to one. If you have a signal that's 2 dB above the threshold, with a ratio of 4 to 1, that will be outputted as a half a dB. 3 dB becomes 3 quarters of a dB. And 4 dB above the threshold becomes 1 dB. So our sound on one side had a range from 1 to 4 dB. But because of where our threshold was set and the ratio, the range has been compressed to three quarters of a dB. That is how compression works. There are other settings I want to talk about that determine how the compressor reacts to the incoming signal. The first one is the attack time, and the second is the release time. So let's first attack <laughs> the attack time. Attack time determines how quickly, in milliseconds, the compressor reacts, or as they say, kicks in, when the level of the input signal crosses over 
our threshold. Remember the threshold? Well, the signal can cross over that, you know, really quickly, but if we set an attack time that's slower, the compressor won't kick in right away. This is a little confusing, so let me say it another way. Slow attack time settings allow fast or peak signal transients to pass through the compressor circuitry unaffected. Think of a compressor as like closing a door. Imagine you have a crowd of people outside your door all trying to get in. If you close it quickly, only a few of them will get in. But if you close it slowly, you'll have a house full of people. That's how attack time works. So let's look at release time. It's somewhat different. Release time determines how quickly, in milliseconds again, the compressor slopes back to restore the normal input side levels after the input signal crosses back below the threshold. So after you've slammed the door with the attack time, it's like opening the door again to let more people back in. How fast you open up the door is your release time. So what does that mean in terms of us, you know, audio guys? Well, let's diagram it out a little bit. This yellow line is our input signal. And pretend this sharp vertical part right here is an attack transient. If we have a compressor setting with a slower attack time than our input signal's attack transient, you can see that the compressor hasn't kicked in. So this part of our signal that is above the threshold will pass through the compressor unaffected. But as the attack of the compressor kicks in, the rest of the signal that is above the threshold will be compressed. If we want to compress those transients, right, then we have to set a compressor setting with an equally fast attack time. As you can see here, now all of our yellow signal transients that happen to pass above the threshold will be compressed because our compressor's attack setting is fast. Right? We've slammed the door fast so that none of those dBs will get through unaffected. Release time, which is opening the door, can be diagrammed the same way. As our signal passes below the threshold, the compressor has to get back to its normal setting. So here is a signal with a lot of transients. And here is our attack and release time settings on our compressor. And you can see that our attack and release times on the compressor mirror the signal. So our door is closing and opening and closing and opening fairly rapidly, right? Closing and opening, closing and opening, creating what is called pumping, right? It's like grabbing a volume knob and turning it back and forth real fast, creating a pumping sound, a volume. Sometimes that pumping of our compressor can add to the excitement of the music, but other times, on certain types of music, you hear it, and it doesn't sound real good. And oftentimes, you want your compression to be as transparent as possible. Well, you can do that by increasing the release time. As you can see here, our release time is slower, so it isn't following our input signal directly, creating less variations in volume level, which gets rid of the obvious pumping sound as the compressor wants to get back to normal levels. So it'd be like grabbing a volume knob and turning it less dramatically so that you don't hear all that pumping. To review, we've talked about threshold, we've talked about ratio, and we've talked about attack and release. Now that we understand how compressors work, let's take a closer look at Logic's compressor.